everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Legends of the Game. Today, our guest is the legend, <laughs> the legend, Joe's Joyce. Joan Joyce, oh my gosh, how, I am so, I don't, the words won't come to have you on the show, thank you. I'm here. I, such a huge fan of yours, I used to watch you play when I uh -huh. was a kid. Uh -huh. So, the biggest thing on my mind right now is your knuckleball. Uh -huh. Who taught you that? Um, a fellow by the name of Larry Egan. He, um, he was a pitcher out of uh, New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, I worked on my knuckleball for years and years and years. And I mean, not my knuckleball, a changeup. Right. Okay? And I could never throw a changeup. I could never slow it down enough to be a changeup. And so, you know, I mean, everybody kept on telling me, you know, you have to keep working on it until you can get it because eventually they're going to catch up with you. Well, I mean, I would have to say that nobody ever did catch no. up with me. Um, I would say but, that too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then I, and then I was dating him. He was a fellow out of New Haven, Connecticut, a uh, pitcher for a lot of uh, the major teams around our area. Not really the Ray Bestus Cardinals, our men's team, but uh, Poughkeepsie had a team, you know. So he played in a couple places. And he was a very, very, very good pitcher. So he was a fast so pitch he, pitcher. Yeah. He played and softball. he said to me one he said to me one day, How come you don't throw a changeup? And I said, I've been trying to throw a changeup forever. Showed me how to throw a knuckleball. And before we were done throwing uh, with each other, I could throw a knuckleball. And so then I started to use the knuckleball. That and, and that is something that you've been known for. No. Well, that's how I remember you. As a, as a knuckleball pitcher? Yeah, I remember oh, your no. knuckleball. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, I threw the knuckleball, but I didn't throw it that often. Well, it was very effective. It did what it was oh, it, supposed to it do. Did. Yeah, it definitely was effective. I mean, I, I remember when, you know, with our pro team, the Connecticut Falcons. Right. And I had uh, four pitchers, myself and three others. And I taught them how to throw the knuckleball. And we were, um, we would have contests, you know, when we were practicing on throwing the knuckleball and the catchers rated them from one to 10. And the only way you could get a 10 was if the catcher could not put a glove on the ball. Yeah. Okay. So if the catcher was able to touch it, okay, then you couldn't get a 10. You know, you could get a seven or an eight, but you know, Never it, a 10. you couldn't get a 10. Okay. And we used to get tens. Catchers would try to catch it, and it would, it, I mean, oh it would God. just dive away. It was so good. Did, did you I, have I, this competition during games or practice? Or no, both? just in practice. Just in, in practice. practice. Yeah. yeah, in practice. And, um, I mean, I, I used to throw it hard also, okay? But I had to stop doing that because, I mean, it was so hard to catch for the catcher that, you know, if there was anybody on base, they would just get right. another base, so. I didn't throw it. Um, I didn't throw it hard anymore. I just threw it as a changeup. Well, you, you have, you and Margie Wright have a similar story on the knuckleball. Your version is a little different than hers. Would you share your version of that story? Uh, well, <laughs> I was at the na <laughs> I was officiating at the national basketball tournament in uh, Illinois. Right. Okay. And Margie was going to school at Illinois. Right. And um, now I don't know if her team was playing in the tournament, but it seemed like every time that I was not officiating in a game and was there at the arena, she would grab me and take me to the other arena. I mean, they had like two gyms and um, work on, on pitching. And that's when I taught her how to throw the uh, chain, the uh, knuckleball. The knuckleball. Yeah. yeah, she says that she took advantage of every second you weren't. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, she would, she would pull me up into the other gym every single time I was there, just sitting down, relaxing, watching a basketball game. <laughs> well, she loves that pitch, and I watched her too. So, you are a multi sport athlete. Yes. But 
what is your favorite softball memory? Because my, my thing is, is I want people to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And we're not educating our young athletes on who came before them. What's your favorite softball memory? Well, probably the one that made me famous. How's that? Okay. Striking out Ted Williams. Ted Williams. Okay. And also Hank Aaron around the same time. You know, the two. Oh, um, and also Hank Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I pitched against a few of them, you know. All right, yeah. Well, didn't you pitch like, against Mickey Mantle too? No, no, no. No, he not Mickey? My, no, Mickey was my hero. That's I right. Mickey Mantle from when I was four or five. <laughs> when my father first took me down to see the Yankees play. Well, tell me about striking out Ted Williams. Um, it was with the Jimmy Fund. The Jimmy Fund is a, um, uh, a fund for kids that have some type of cancer, I think. I mean, I, I can't remember now even what, you know, what the fund was. But anyway, Ted Williams was very much involved in the Jimmy Fund. So was Jerry Lewis. Right. Um, you know, a bunch of um, celebrities. And um, we had a police officer in Waterbury, my hometown, that his son had the disease of the Jimmy Fund. And so the uh, police department would put on a week of activities to raise money for the Jimmy Fund. And they used to raise a ton of money. One, one day, the chief, chief, chief of police would come out into the center of, of town where we had north and north and south main street and east and, and west main street uh, intersect okay he would stay in the middle and as the light changed he would start collecting money from all the cars I and mean, who's not going to give to the chief of police, chief of police right <laughs> in, in waterbury so um, they used to just make a lot of money and then we, they would have all different kind of games up at the stadium and everything. And so during that summer before it happened, um, they, they decided that they were, they got an appointment with Ted Williams up at his camp up in Massachusetts. And uh, so they called me and asked me if I would go with them. And they told Ted Williams that they were going to bring a softball pitcher up there and that she would throw at the camp. Okay, so right. I, you know, brought my uniform, ball glove, you know, the whole deal. Went up and uh, at the time I was having a little problem with my arm. And um, so I really didn't go full out. I went, <laughs> oh, so, <no. laughs> so <laughs> everybody kind of hit me, you know, and Williams, you know, came up to bat and he hit the ball also. You know, I mean, every, everybody really basically hit me because I was only throwing, you know, right? maybe a little bit better than half because I was getting a shooting pain in my arm. Oh, no. And uh, the national tournament was three weeks away and I, and I, and I couldn't, um, I couldn't afford hurting it any more sure. than it was already hurt. So anyway, but then a couple weeks later was when he came down to uh, Waterbury for the Jimmy Fun Week, all the activities. And that's when I got to pitch against them. And um, I had him up to bat for 10 minutes. And he fouled off a couple pitches behind him, rise balls. And I threw a lot of drops at him and he, he, couldn't, he couldn't hit the drop. And so wow. he finally threw down the bat 10 to 15 minutes later and said, I can't hit this and walked off and he wasn't mad he wasn't mad you know i mean he 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 told you know some people that the toughest pitcher pitcher that he ever faced was me joan joyce he said so, he didn't say he didn't say joan joyce he said a girl I, well in your book which uh -huh. just came out in august right yep last august he mentioned Girls weren't supposed to be able to throw curveballs. Well, that's how it started. You know, we were walking back for lunch after um, I did the exhibition, and he uh, was walking up ahead of me, and he turned around to me, and he said, how did you throw that curveball? And I had my mitt with me with my ball in it, you know, so I took the ball out, held it, and I told him how I spun the ball. And uh, he looked at me, and he goes, girls shouldn't know that. And I looked back at him, and I said to him, this girl does. 
That's why that I love it. you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that did you it. Called you called Ted Williams. <laughs> and he said yes right away that he would come. Oh, and that. Then I, there was there was another time when I was out in California, uh, when I was going to school out there, and I had hurt my knee. You know, I hurt my knee playing basketball out in California, and during the summertime, uh, when we were getting ready to go to the nationals in about a month, I hurt I hurt my knee running running the bases, and uh, so I was rehabbing it and trying to get ready to go. And they called me and and asked me if I would come back, you know, for the Jimmy Fund. Oh, and I wow. said to him, I said I really cannot come back this year. I said because I said I hurt my knee about two, three weeks ago, and I'm rehabbing it, trying to get ready for the national tournament that's going to be in like three weeks. Right. And I said, I really can't. I said, I haven't pitched in a month, and, you know, I need to, uh, I need to, um, you know, rehab it. And so they said, okay. So they called Williams back, and the first thing he asked was, is Joan coming? That's so cool. And, and, Ted, and they said, no, she can't come. She's got a uh, hurt knee. And um, she's rehabbing, but she's got to be ready for the national tournament. And he said, well, he said, I'm not going to come. If Jones and they him. said, oh, no, we can't, <laughs> we, can't, we can't have this. He said, well, he said, you know, you could go ahead and advertise it that I'm coming. He said, and I'll send you a telegram on the day of, you know, that something came up that I couldn't come down. Oh, wow. And then they they said, unless you can get, he said, unless you can get Joan to come. And so they get back on the telephone with me and pleading with me, please, 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 you know, he won't come unless you, you come. So I finally said yes, you know, because I'm coming back to my home and I can't right. go in, you know, and out in two days. I got to stay home for at least a week, you know, so I um, said yes. And I had to call him personally to tell him that I was coming because they wouldn't believe, they wouldn't believe the, he wouldn't believe the police officers. So you had he to said, call you got to have, you got to have Joan call me and tell me that she's coming. And I did. I called him and told him that I would be there. And so that's how it worked out. So the reason for this podcast is the fact that I want people to know who you are. We know all of our girls know who Ted Williams, they know who he is. So how do you suggest, what do you think we should do to teach our girls? Well, you know, some, uh, you know, it's, I, that's, that's very interesting. You know, like I had, I had a, a softball player that, that played for me that was also a basketball player. At, at, uh, at FAU, Florida Atlantic University. And uh, I received a basketball, okay? Because actually basketball was my favorite game. Right. I mean, I love- That's in your basketball. book as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, um, I, had, I, got, I received a basketball signed by John Havlicek and Dave Collins. Okay. okay? And I called- um, the gal on my team who played on the basketball team and also played softball. And I said, you got to come and see my basketball. Okay. Like a little kid, right? right. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was excited to have this, uh, excited to have this basketball. Okay. So she comes into my office, you know, and I take the basketball and I give it to her and said, look at these names on it. She looks at the two names. She said, who are these two guys? I said, you don't know who Hondo Havlicek is? Are you kidding me? And you, and you say you're a basketball player? <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they have no clue to what, it, what happened behind them. Yeah. And nor do they care. I mean, they don't really care. But I want them to. Is that a... Is that a I want them well, to know who Joan Joyce is. Right, right. Okay. And let me, tell, let me tell you another story. Okay. When I, okay. Was, I, first, started a, I, when I first started a coach. Okay. We were in the um, Atlantic Sun conference, and it was um, probably the start of March, and we had to go up to um, Macon, Georgia, for a conference series weekend with Campbell, Mate, um, um, Mercer, 
and us, three teams. And so we went up there and it rained. I mean, it had been raining for two, three days. So the field was underwater. There was no way we were going to be able to play any of the games. And so Campbell was on their way down to Florida for a week of playing at one of the tournaments up in Orlando. So I said to the coach of Campbell, I said, if I can get a field down in Orlando, you know, would you consider playing the games down there against, you know, against us? Right. And she said, yes. And so I called a friend of mine who was coaching at uh, Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, got the field, got it all set. And so we, she, she said to me, the only problem is, she said, you can't play before one o'clock on Tuesday, let's say, okay, or, or Saturday. And I said, well, why is that? And she said, because the U.S. Uh, the softball team is practicing at the field. And I said, oh, great. I said, you know, we'll set it up for after that. And I said, I'll bring my team over early and let so them bad. watch the, US, the USA softball team, okay? And uh, Granger was pitching for them then. And, uh, you know, Granger's on the mound pitching, um, you know, uh, not, not on the mound on the field, but in the bullpen, okay? Right. And a couple of my pitchers went over and watched her, okay? And when she was done, they went over and got on the mound like they were standing in, in Michelle Granger's, you know, footsteps, okay? And then uh, Ralph Raymond was coaching, and Irene Shea was the um, – was the um, chaperone type thing, right? Okay, or the NCAA rep or somebody. I, it, she was with them anyway. But anyway, um, so I went out and stood out in center field with Ralph and Irene because I, you know, Ralph coached me and and Irene. I played with Irene. And the break edge. Yeah. yeah, right. And and also the um, the uh, Connecticut Falcons, the right. pro team. Well, Ralph wasn't there, but um, Irene was. So anyway, I stood out there and, and, you know, chatted with them the whole time. And then it was getting to be over and Ralph had to go in. Okay. So Irene and I walked around with them and, you know, down the first baseline and we were standing down a little ways from the dugout and uh, my kids came over. Okay. And they said, coach, coach, do you think we can get their autographs? And I said, sure. You know, I said, they would be more than happy to give you uh, their right. autographs, okay? <clears throat> so anyway, they get done, okay? Ralph's done with them, and they pick up their stuff in the dugout. My kids are waiting for them outside the dugout, you know, so when they came out, they could sign sign their gloves or whatever they were right. going to have, have them sign, okay? They walk by my kids, okay, and come over to me, okay, and ask me for my autograph, okay? And my kids are watching this, and they're going, "Are you ki are you serious? They're all going over to coach to get coach's autograph." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then they decided that that um, that I knew everybody in softball. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> yeah. So your your own kids don't appreciate who Joan Joyce is. Um, uh, no. They have well, no, they have you're no, a humbled no. person, though. You'd, but, you know, there's not even that many people around anymore that had seen me pitch. Well, I did. And I, we need to have, we just need to be talking about it, though. <laughs> you just, you struck out Ted Williams. You struck out yeah. Hank Aaron. Yeah. The yeah. two best hitters in Major League Baseball. Yeah. And I had a huge, I had a huge argument with uh, Willie Mays on TV. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was, was that on, about? I was on a uh, sports show with them up in at Hart in Hartford, Connecticut, yeah. and uh, the uh, announcer asked me, "Do you think that at some time a woman will play in in Major League Baseball?" And I said, "Yes." I said, "At some point." Somebody will come along and play in Major League Baseball. And he went crazy. Willie Mays went crazy. 
I mean, you know, he said, oh, there is no way, there is no way that that is ever going to happen. He said, what's going to happen when they slide into second base and take out the second baseman? And I looked at him and I said, what do you think happens right now in softball? Right. It's the same, it's the same thing. I said, it's not any different. You know, the only difference is that the guys will be a little bit faster than the girls, you know, right. but you're going to find somebody coming along that could go out and play uh, Major League Baseball. And now you're starting to find um, a lot of girls that play uh, baseball, you know, in Little League first and then start playing softball. Right. You know, so, I mean, that's probably a little different because when I played, I got kicked out the first game. <laughs> because you were a girl. Yeah, exactly. That's because yeah. I hit two doubles off the fence and I was showing up the boys, so they wouldn't let me play yeah, anymore. Because I was, I was a catcher then. Wow. Yeah. What's this on the book? It talks about you and Billie Jean King uh, yeah. starting a pro league. Yeah, we had a pro league for four years. We had all the best players in the country in the era that you're talking about, okay, when you saw me play. Yeah, I didn't know Billie okay. Jean King was a part of that. Oh, yeah. Billie Jean King, uh, Martina Navratilova, Janie, Janie Blaylock. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Billie all Jean was, uh, it, Billie Jean's company was the one that started the whole thing. She, um, you know, like she, um, she got Dennis Murphy, who had started a whole bunch of uh, different uh, leagues. She had gotten um, Dennis Murphy, you know, and he was one of, one of the part owners of the um, Bakersfield uh, team in California, because there was a couple teams in California. There was Bakersfield and there was um, Orange County. Right. And, and I don't think there was anybody up north that... Um, but those two, those two play, and Rosie Black, you right. know, the queen and her maids, also yeah. played in that league. And he, her, her dad was a maniac. Okay, <laughs> I mean a maniac. He, he, he said that you know, Rosie pitching against girls was like having a day off. Oh. Okay, so a little trash talk. Yeah, so she's pitching for Bakersfield. Okay. Right. And she only played like half of the season and quit. Dad took her and uh, went back out on the road because she she couldn't win a game. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But the couple of the other gals that played on that team uh, stayed and played in the pro league. Well, we have but, to talk about golf. Okay. Because I love golf and I need you to teach me <laughs> play but you have a record still standing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the yep. fewest putts in a round yep wow the 17 it, it, that, it, i'm telling you it will never be broken well then that must have been the it, was that the game of your life or how do you describe that game um well uh i i I probably would say it would have to be the game of my life, okay? Right. Because, I mean, you know, to, I mean, I shot 67 and was on the final day of a, uh, an LPGA tournament. Right. And I finished sixth in the tournament. But um, I was on a golf course that was very hard for me to play, okay? It was a lot of hard pan. And yeah. it was, you know, four years, four years into me playing golf. And I'm, I didn't really play that much golf even before that. And I really struggled with hitting, hitting a ball off of hard pan, you know, always skidded on me, you know, and so it would, it would always knock it to the right. And I mean, you can't believe some of the shots that I hit in that tournament and score as well as I did. Okay. It is, it was amazing. And the thing that was funny about that particular day when I, when I had the 17 putts, the Atlanta uh, Lorelei ladies, who also was a major team at that time, and we used to play them all the time in Atlanta, okay, right. they all came out and watched me uh, play golf that day. And they're going crazy, okay, because you know softball players don't have any clue to etiquette 
in golf. When you <laughs> <No>. in golf. <laughs> and they, they are just hooting and hollering and having a great time out there. It was so, it was so much fun. But anyway, I just, I chipped it in four times. And I mean, yeah, and it was, I mean, it was a golf course that, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, the things that, the things that I did that day, I couldn't do again if I spent the rest of my life trying to hit those shots and make them. So you, you know, played just, pro professional softball. Mm -hmm. You played professional golf. Mm -hmm. You played professional basketball. Well, we weren't paid. I mean, you know, professional AAU basketball, yes, probably was pretty close to professional. I mean, we played against the best teams in the country. Right. So. What other, I mean, did you play anything else? Volleyball. Wow. We played volleyball um, after basketball, and we played, uh, I played USVBA, played in um, three or four national championships. Uh, you I are bowled. an athlete. Yeah, I bowled. You bowled? I, yeah, that's where I made my money. Was you I still I was, bowled? I a, yeah, uh, no. I, I, I have a bad left knee, okay? And everything you do in life and sports, you need right. your left knee. And I heard of play, playing basketball in 65. And, um, you know, at that time, I, there was no way I was going to have an operation on it. You know? Right. I mean, I might consider it someday i'm working on uh, <laughs> you heard it 65 <laughs> and you might consider huh? surgery <laughs> well you know i think it's just i think i just need to get the uh, arthritis cleaned up in it yeah maybe i you know because I, I i fell down um probably three years ago now i was helping hold a garbage can for someone who was climbing up the other side on the house that had no furniture in it and and I didn't know the house and I was in the garage. And so I was on the corner of the garbage can. Yeah. Okay? And I decided I better get. There you are. I better get the full size, full size of it. And uh, I didn't know there was a step down there. So I came around and went down oh. and went over and I used my volleyball skills went down, hit on my side where I should, and then kind of rolled over oh, from there, whacked my elbows down and whacked my head on the, on the ground. Oh, um, it, it didn't hardly do anything. Didn't do anything to my head, didn't hardly do anything to my elbows, but I fractured, I broke the uh, bone on, on my femur that goes up the side oh, to my wow. hip. So, and, my uh, strength and conditioning coach and my assistant coach were, were with me at the time. So, and I was one block away from the hospital. So <laughs> my assistant coach was going to run over to the hospital and get one of those chairs, you know, that you get into, you know, and they push it. Right. He was going to push me to the hospital <laughs> so I could get an x-ray. I, I said to him, I said, hey, hold on for a second. I said, I don't want you two yo-yos. <laughs> moving me around when I don't know if there's anything wrong with my hip. Okay. Right. So I said, just call the ambulance. So the ambulance came, took me over, and then I uh, had had an operation the next uh, two two days. That was a Sunday, and um, on Tuesday I had an operation on on uh, my bone. So, but it was good. I was up and going. Two weeks later. Two weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the really segments a... that I have is a player from today ask you a question. So Sydney Spindle from the Quad Cities, Illinois, she plays for the Heartland Havoc. She wants to know what factors do you feel influence you to become the coach you are today? You know, I think it, I, 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 don't, I, I can't really say that there were any factors um, in it, but I think from when I was like very, very young playing um, uh, softball at the park, you know, I mean, I, I went down to the park and played everything, basketball, softball, you know, everything. And so um, when I was down there, we had a softball team. 
And so, and I had learned how to play softball being with my father and my brother all the time because my father played. He played right. basketball and softball. And so I was with him all the time because my mother worked in the evening. And so um, when, I, uh, when I used to go down to the park, you know, I was the pitcher, okay, but I had no clue to how to pitch, you know, it was just almost like, almost like slow pitch, you know, just get it over, because I, right. I think I was probably eight or ten, and, um, but I tried to catch everything, make sure that I was the one that caught everything, because the rest of the kids couldn't play, really, okay, <laughs> right. and, and the lady that was the coach of the team didn't know anything about softball, oh, okay, so guess right. what? I was the coach and the pitcher in, in the games that we played, you know? So, I mean, it was right from the very beginning, I was always teaching, you know? You were 10 and, years old and you were the coach of the team. Yeah, <laughs> right. Cause she didn't know anything about the game. Okay, at least I knew how to play the game and I could help the other kids, you know, that were, were on, on the field. So that's, that's really what got me started, you know? And then, I mean, I've coached my entire life. You have my entire life. I mean, when I played basketball, I was the coach. When I played, uh, when I played breakette softball, I was not the coach. We had coaches, uh, but in the um, in the pro league, I was uh, um, one of the owners. So I was like the manager. You know, we had a we had a manager that was a paid manager, uh, not a manager, but a um, vice president of operations, you know, sure. who was in charge, you know, of, of the finances. But, um, but I was the one we had, we had coaches. Okay. But I mean, you know, I was the one that, that really gave the instructions on who's playing where and when and all of that, because I was still playing myself. You were a player coach. Yeah. Yeah. And I was a player coach in volleyball. I coached the team in volleyball. I coached the team in basketball. You know, so I mean, I basically coach. I coached high school. I coached junior high, uh, junior college. I coached grammar school. You know, so I mean, basically, I co I've been coaching my entire life. How long have you been at FAU? I should know that, but I don't know it off the top. Twenty six years. Twenty six years. I started. I started the team there, twenty six years ago, and it happened when I was playing on the golf tour. Um, I bumped in, I bumped into one of the athletic directors in, um, it probably was, uh, maybe October ish. Um, I was teaching golf at right. uh, Deer Creek country club in, in Florida and, uh, bumped into him coming out of, he was coming out of the men's locker room and I was coming out of the ladies locker room and he stopped me and he said, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure. And he said to me, he said, uh, I'm an athletic director at Florida Atlantic University. And um, I said, yeah, I know. I said, I, I come over and watch your basketball teams play over there. And he said, well, he said, um, we're division two right now. And I said, yeah, I said, I know that. And he said, and we're going to division one in two or three years. And we have to add sports and we are going to add fast pitch softball. And we would like to have you coach the team. <laughs> I said to him, I said, well, I said, I'll tell you what. I said, if you were going to start the team today, I would say no. I said, because I'm not ready to give up playing golf on the tour. Okay. But two or three years down the road, I said, yeah. I might, you know, be ready to make a move. And so I did. You know, two or three years later, they started the team and um, I got the job and started the program. I had four scholarships. My fall, fall semester when we were playing, you know, fall ball. Okay, right. I would go out and count heads. <laughs> I wouldn't have enough. And we were leaving to go on a trip, you know, to play in a tournament for the fall. Okay. And I wouldn't have enough kids. I'd have to pull somebody, find somebody, you know, that would be eligible. I got a kid that was redshirting in volleyball who was already um, qualified, you know, NCAA. 
and I would take her with with us, and I, I didn't even know if she would be able to play. I'd stick her out in right field and hope <laughs> that nobody would hit the ball out there. But that's how it started, and I've been there ever since. And do you plan on retiring, or is you're here? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that yet. I mean, well, I'm still going and still enjoy it. And, you know, basically my two assistant coaches do, do most of, uh, most of the, most of the um, practices. I work basically with the pitchers. Yeah. You know, well, if they don't, if, if my pitchers don't get better, I might have to retire. <laughs> oh, no. So the, the, your, your book came out last August, you said? Yeah. And, um, we can buy it on Amazon. That's where I found mine. I love mm -hmm. on the back picture, picture of you and Ted. Yeah. That's, that's an awesome, I love, love, love that story. Um, so we'll definitely have to promote that this book is out there because I need people to know who you are. It's my personal mission. Okay, there you go. That was, that was the mission of, that was the mission of the fellow who wrote it, Tony Renzoni. Well, I'll have to he join. Wrote, he, he wrote that book because he wanted people to know who I was. He said, here I am in Connecticut. He's from Waterbury also. Here right. I am in Connecticut growing up with um, the, probably the greatest athlete, woman athlete in the country. Okay. And nobody knows who she is. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing he said, and she won't promote herself. You know, I mean, not at all. And um, so he said, I am going to, I am going to promote her. <laughs> well, I'm so going to promote her because I want people to know who you are. My last question, Joan, athletes today, they want to be in the big games. They want to play at the big levels, but don't want to do the work to get them there. What would you tell, <laughs> you agree, what would you tell them? <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, yeah. How would you coach a kid that has the talent but isn't putting in the the time, or yeah. they need to listen? That's the other thing is, you know, they don't. Um, you know, some kids that are that are that good, you know, think they know it all, and uh, and sometimes you know that hinders their growth in becoming a good athlete. I mean, I've had a couple kids that that could have been really, really good, but they think they know, they think they know it all, okay? Yeah. And they have no clue really until, you know, they really grow up, you know, and uh, get out into life and find out really what's going on, you know, on how much work it is, you know, to be good. And I, I find the biggest thing, the, the two biggest things that I find is the difference now than when I grew up, okay? is number number one i mean every single day i went to either a park on the street or with my my father to a game okay and threw a ball around or you know so i was always doing something i could remember when i was in high school i would get out of school and run to the bus to get on the bus to get home put my shorts on um sweatshirt okay Right. basketball under one arm shovel in the other arm go up and shovel the basketball court and shoot by myself for two three hours by myself right okay so i mean you don't you can't you can't get the kids out of the house now no you can't okay it's because cold they and got it's all 30, the, 30 degrees you know right. i mean they got all these you know um iPads, phones, games, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can't, you, you can't get them out to do it. Plus, the other thing, too, is we could do that then. Now you can't do that, okay? Parents are afraid to let their kids go to the park, okay, right. unless you're uh, there with them. Correct. You know, because, I mean, with kids being stolen, you know, out of parks and, you know, all over the place. I mean, you know, and, that, and I don't blame parents, you know, so it's, it's even a lot harder. And that's why... There's so much of organized ball right now, okay, which actually is good if you had coaches that would teach the game, 
because my biggest thing in softball is when, when I get uh, student athletes coming to uh, our school is they know how to throw, they know how to catch, they know how to swing the bat. They do not know how to play the game. Okay, it's because they're told every single thing to do and then they're not learning. Right. Okay, it's in one ear and out the other because you hear a coach telling you something to do all the time. So after a while, they don't even care what you're saying. I had, we had a, a, a camp, a team camp, uh, three years ago. And uh, I was sitting down next to our dugout, you know, uh, the kids were in the dugout, and I was sitting next to the dugout watching them play. And there was a coach that was standing almost right in front of me, okay? And I was listening to him, and by about two innings, I had a headache from listening to him. Oh, my God. Okay? And I, I said to him, uh, I said to him, I, um, I had his name, Bob, let's say, Bob, do you think with you calling out all that information to those kids that they are learning, you know, from that and that you eventually stop doing that? And he looked at me and said, hmm, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Right. They have I said, so do you decisions. yell? I said, do you yell all that stuff to them every single game for the whole season? And he said, yeah. And you know, he came to me the next year, they came down and did the same team camp. And he came over to me and he said to me, he said, he said, um, do you remember me? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, mm, probably not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said, I didn't remember that he was the one that I told, right. <laughs> you know, that he shouldn't do that. And he said, I'm the one that you told, ask the question, if, you know, with me telling them what to do on the field, okay, did that teach them how to play the game? And he said, and guess what? He said, I've totally, totally changed how I coach now. He said, I do not do that anymore. Yeah, they have to learn how to make their own decisions. That's exactly right. Exactly right. I mean, you know, and, and if you ask them a question, if you ask them a question, they'll give you a dissertation. Right. Okay. On as simple a play is we had a, we had a situation on, you know, working on cutoffs. Okay. And so I asked one of the, one of the, one of the players that played right field. I said, when a ball is hit and it goes down into the corner. Okay. Wh what is your thinking when you're going after that ball on what's going to happen? And, um, she said, well, she said, I have to think on how far that, that runner's going to go and where I'm going to have to. I said, oh, you don't have to think like that. I said, you have one thing to do is get that ball as fast as you can, turn around and throw to your cut, which should be standing there with her hands up in the air. Let her make the decision on where to go from there. That's right. Your job is done. Right. You know, and it's like she's given me a dissertation on how she's going to play this ball. You know, and, you know, I said, you can't be thinking like that. Pick the ball, get the ball as quick as you can, get it to the cut. Right. Okay. And let her decide then because she's got a better shot at knowing where the runner is now than you do running, you know, with your back to the play. And the catcher <laughs> should be talking to him. Well, but you know what? The catcher, the catchers, and, and, and I really basically disagree with it, disagree with that because, okay. number one, they call it out right away. Okay. okay. They don't look to see where runners are. And they're, I mean, as soon as some, let's say there's a runner on second. As soon as there's a base hit, they're yelling, home, 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 home. Well, you know what? When the kid picks up the ball out there and gets ready to throw home and you got a fast runner, you don't have a play at home. No. But they're throwing home. And guess what? The runner that, that hit the ball is now going to second base. So now you got another person in scoring position. And I'm, why you hit your cut off. I am not, I am not <laughs> kidding you. I mean, I'm about ready to kill people then, you know, <laughs> because it's, I mean, you know, cause the way the game is played now. Okay. Right. I mean, it's hard to strike out people anymore. You know, right. the hitters have gotten so much better and faster. Kids are faster, you know, so that, you know, you keep letting that runner go to second base and balls are going to be hit and they're going to be hit hard. So there's going to be a lot, a lot more runs scored 
And, you know, we're trying to stop runners from scoring and you keep letting these people go to second base on you. You know, so it's, a, it's like they have no clue to the flow of a game and know, you know, like they, they go in the dugout and cheer. Well, yeah. guess what? Your job in the dugout is not to be cheering, you know, to be cheering, you know, come on, you know, Joan, let's um, get a base hit or something like that. But you got to watch what the pitcher is doing, what people on the field are doing, so that when you come up to bat, you have an idea of what's going on out there. Don't rely on the coaches to have to tell you everything. Oh, I hope everybody here listens to that. I mean, I it's like... Play the game, learn the game, be a student of the game. They don't... Let me tell you what. Like, okay. we, would go, we would go to a tournament, let's say, um, with up in um, a, a regional, okay? Let's say we go to a regional, okay? And we're going to play the next team that's going to win the next game. We're going to play against that team, okay? So I'll say, okay, we're going to sit and watch this game, okay? You would think that I was pulling a gun on them and going to kill them. Oh, <laughs> because I told them no, we were going to sit and watch the game, okay? They do not watch the game. No. I mean – you could have the College World Series on, okay? And they will not sit down and watch the game. They will not sit down and watch it. And we need them to. Absolutely. If they want to get better, okay? Yes. They have, they have to do that. I mean, you know, that's, that's the way you get better. You know, baseball, they don't ever watch baseball. Okay? And that, I mean, because I'll say to them, anybody watch the um, – you know, the uh, Marlins play last night? No. <laughs> you know, so they don't, they don't really learn it. Right. You know, it's, it's amazing to me. And, you know, and now it's all about the scholarship. It's all about the scholarship. They play, they play 10 and under, 12 and under, 14, 16. Okay. And it's all because maybe not because they love the game. Okay, because they certainly don't like to go out and watch it. <laughs> That's true. You know, and, uh, and then they come to us, and they still don't know how to play the game. Right. And it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. And the other thing, too, is they don't learn how to bunt. That's the other thing. They don't learn how to bunt? Nope. So what would you tell coaches today that are, you know, the – a 16 and under coach, what are you telling? What would you tell that coach? The first thing that I would tell them is to, to teach them the game. You know, teach them the game. I mean, you know, someone can come up and hit a ball into the gap, okay? Now, if you don't, if you don't know that that runner is the slowest runner on the other team right. or the fastest runner on the other team, which you should know, you know, when that ball goes past it to the fence, because now you know where you're going to have to go with the ball, okay? If you don't know that information, I mean, you, you're, you're playing blind out there, and that's when you make the mistakes. So teach them the game and let them play the game. Exactly. I mean, I, I, um, I, 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 Bill Edwards, I think, was a, 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 a coach that, I mean, he was from up in New York, and uh, coached at Hofstra for a long time, okay? And I think Bill was an excellent coach. And, you know, he, he, he would let them play the fall without anybody telling them what to do. You know, nobody could say anything on the field, okay? You couldn't call out. A catcher couldn't call out the play, you know, because – they, they call it right away, and, it, and it, you can't call it right away. I mean, right. you know, if it's to the fence, get the ball, get it to the, the second baseman, let the second baseman, you know, or the shortstop, whoever the cut is, no, let them make the, mis the uh, decision on where the ball needs to go. Don't, uh, you know, I mean, it just drives me crazy because they, they just let too many runners move bases, and, right. and they don't need to be moving those bases. Hit your cut so off. that's that's what I think the biggest the biggest. Um, okay, then they're playing five games in a day. What is that? How do you what do you think about that? No, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, five that's games terrible. in a day. Yeah, we went to Houston once, you know, to play in a tournament. Breakouts, 
Yes. Okay. We had to play three games in one day. Right. We never went back there again. We never went back to that tournament again. That's ridiculous. You know, we oh, had. I remember had about the breakouts. You guys had four. like five different uniforms. You yep. would change <laughs> uniforms in between games. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> we had the yeah. same uni. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Joe! We had, we, had, we had a we had a wonderful sponsor. Yes, wonderful did. sponsor. And, there, and, and a softball advocate. Yeah, they yeah. still are. I mean, he, not only did he was he softball, you know, he had he had a men's team, he had a women's team, major teams. Right. He had a, um, a shop team, men and women, and sponsored a whole little league. Yeah, very huge advocate for. Yeah, for, um, you know, sports in Stratford. I mean, you know, Stratford was just a little sub, sub uh, city to uh, Bridgeport. Right. You know, and it was, uh, I mean, he, he, was, he was great. He was great. It was always the elite team to play for. If yep. you played for the Breakettes, then you were an elite player. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Joan, oh my gosh, I had so much fun. <laughs> it was, I mean, I love, I, I've met you several times. I love meeting you every single time. Complete honor to have this program and to be able to talk to you. And Michelle Smith hooked me up with you. Margie Wright hooked me up with you. So thank you to them. But you are the legend. Margie. Margie is funny. Margie, Mar Margie was the volunteer assistant coach for, um, um, the, the team in Illinois, Jesus, what, um, which one is it? I, uh, it's not Southern Illinois. Illinois State? No, yeah, Illinois State. Because they come, um, Melinda comes to our, uh, right. our tournaments now. Yeah. Almost every year. She used to go yeah, to the, works at the, the first time we, first time we started playing was at LSU. And uh, now, now they come down to our place and play. And uh, Margie was with them last year, you know, and, Melinda, Melinda um, was talking to Shan while they were practicing the day before they were going to play and um, said, is Joan, you know, here? She said, yeah, she's up in the office. She said, can you call her and, and have her meet us at the bus? We'll pull around in front of uh, the Oxley. And uh, so I came down and Melinda comes out of the bus, okay? And, and right. so, you know, I give her a hug and stuff. And, uh, and then Margie jumps off the bus. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> Margie was, Mar I, you know, let me tell you a funny story about Margie. Okay, I can't wait. Okay. Margie, um, Margie was from St. Louis, played with uh, Kudis. And the uh, Louis softball Louis. team out of um, St. Louis. Right. I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when we had the pro league after the, the, uh, the actually the first year of the pro league, I had uh, I had a pitcher from uh, Minnesota. I had um, a pitcher from uh, Chico State that Joan Wallace, who, who I took Joan Wallace's place on the breakettes when um, when I got better than she was. You know, she was the first baseman. Eventually, I took over at first base for her. But anyway, um, she coached at Chico State and. Uh, um, Kathy, this, this gal, Kathy, uh, Kathy Neal, pitched for her up there. And I went up a couple times up to Chico State when I was out in California um, working on my golf game, I think it was. I don't know. But anyway, I went to Chico State. And I watched Kathy pitch. And when we did the pro league, you know, I wanted to make sure that we weren't so dominant that we were going to, you know, beat everybody bad. Because you know, being one of the owners and trying to make this thing go, I tried to make sure all of the teams were pretty level, right. you know, even on, <clears throat> on um, to play. So anyway, um, I had the, the gal from Minnesota and I had an, another one, okay? And there was a gal that was, was recruited by Buffalo, New York. And Buffalo, uh, she couldn't play at Buffalo. And she was a gal from Indianapolis. And she had a full-time job with, um, I think it was an insurance company. So she had to play in Chicago. Okay, so 
we had to move people around, okay, in order for her to play in Chicago. So I moved my number two pitcher behind me to Buffalo. We moved her to Chicago. And Chicago gave me two pitchers, okay, Margie Wright. Yeah. And the second one was um, Sandy Fisher. Yeah. Okay. And San I didn't know anything about Sandy. I knew Margie, okay? Right. And the whole deal was going to be a go if I could sign both those pitchers. So I called both of them, and I gave them a week to decide whether they wanted to come to Connecticut and play for the um, Connecticut Falcons. And um, um, Sandy called me back first, and she had just taken a job, and she decided to decline the job, and she moved to Connecticut. Right. To, to play with us, okay? And Margie then called me a couple days later and said she could not come and play. And I wanted Margie. I didn't know Sandy at all. I did, had no clue to what Sandy Fisher was pitch, pitched like because I'd never seen her. Right. But I wanted Margie. And um, so Margie said to me, she said, I, I can't come this year. She said, but I'll come next year. So I protected her. And, and then made the trade, okay? I had another pitcher, but, you know, we weren't going to be as strong pitching-wise as I thought. And as it, as it turned out now, the next year, now Margie was going to, because she stayed playing amateur ball, because she had just gotten the sponsorship for Kudis. And so she said, I can't leave this year. I just got the sponsor for this team. And I can't just up and, up and leave now. So she stayed that one year, and then the next year she came, uh, came and she was going to come to Connecticut, okay? St. Louis jumped in and bought a, bought a um, franchise, okay? The Hummers. Yeah, and, I, and I'm saying now, how can, I, how can I take Margie out of St. Louis and bring her to Connecticut, okay? That, I mean, that, that would be the wrong thing for me to do to make right. this league go, so... I shipped Margie to uh, St. Louis. I gave Margie to St. Louis, okay? And then her college team won, okay? This, is, um, this was um, uh, three years later or four years later, okay? Um, and she was now playing with St. Louis, okay? And her college team won the College World Series one year. And I was on the committee then, and I was there at the, at, at the park when they won. And... Uh, I saw her that summer and I, you know, congratulated her. I said, you know, uh, congratulations on winning the College World Series. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I said to her, I said, now, if you were playing with the break, uh, with the Falcons, that would be number four, five for you. <laughs> and it was number one. <laughs> so I was giving her digs. If you had right. come and played with us right from the start, you would have had four more championships instead of just the one from your college team. <laughs> oh gosh, she yeah. she's gonna love that story. Yeah, yeah, she uh, uh, Marjorie's a good kid. Well, Great I girl. really appreciate you taking the time, Joan. I love talking to you. I hope I get to do it again. And please, I don't know how you I don't know how you're gonna put all this together. Uh, you know what, a Chaz over at. Uh, Slow softball, that's what she's going to help me with, you know? <laughs> but this has been awesome. Very, very awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And You're next welcome. week, I'm going to have Dr. Dot Richardson. Are you? Another she got, a, she got a hit off of me once. Did she? Yeah, when she was like 14. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm she, sure um, I'll she, ask her about it. Yeah, she played with uh, the Orlando Rebels. And they were in our league, so we played against them. And she tell she tells me that she got a hit off me. I don't know about that. You don't remember she, it? No, no. But that do you does. think I do? You think I remember all the hits that, that people no. got off of me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that does. That's a that's a memory to have, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I'm the only taking one that she bat ever got. off you. I don't know what had happened, but I would love an at bat. <laughs> I'll sit on the knuckleball. You won't throw it. There you go.
No, I won't throw it. I don't throw. I didn't throw it that much. Yeah, but I still loved it when you did. Oh yeah, I did. Well, you know why I did? I mean, because now that I had that knuckleball, I had fun throwing it at people, making them look really bad. Because <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I mean, you know, I, you know, I threw the ball hard enough that it. I mean, it's ridiculous to try to hit hit a, a change up. You know, I mean, right. I, I, I didn't, I didn't even feel like I ever had to throw a change up. But I'll tell you what changed. It changed when the, um, the uh, pro league moved back to 44 feet. Really? That was a, yeah. that was a huge, that was a huge, that was like, I was learning how to pitch all over again. Right. You know, four feet made the difference of people being able to see the ball. You know, because uh, from 40 feet, it, the ball was past you, mm -hmm. you know, so fast. But now you had a split second longer. And, you know, I mean, we had, we had really good players. I mean, you know, it would, be, it, would be, it would be a good game, you know, to take the people that you're talking about, right. Dot, Margie, myself, Spanks, you know, oh, all yeah. of those people, okay, and put them up against the best players now. Let me tell you what, they'd have a hard time beating us. I bet they would. Yeah, they would. They would. Well, you, bow, I'm bowing down to you. You are awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. And I will, I will try to keep, uh, keep this book going. I want this book to go. Thank Perfect. you so much, Joan. Okay, thank you. I talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.